Thank you. It's wonderful to be here this evening. And as Peter said, I'm here to talk about, it's not about the boat, specifically the ark. So I'm from America, and one of the things that struck me when I first came over here was that people don't have a lot of faith in religion, and they think the Bible is a lot of superstitious nonsense. Well, I'm a rabbi, and I look for meaning in the Bible, and it's 3,000 years old, and I think we have a lot to learn from it. The stories are rich, they're dramatic, and they help us find meaning. Even if you think they're fairy stories, um, you can learn something even for self-gratification. So one of my favorite stories is the story of Noah. And I see it as the ark as a metaphor for communities. Communities are like arcs. The behavior of the members determines whether they float or they sink. And just like arcs, communities need proper maintenance. Individuals need care and attention. And often, after a long period of time, the leaders need to go off and have a stiff drink. I think all stories, even biblical stories, and especially biblical stories, teach us something. And so I found 10 lessons that I'd like to share with you today from the Noah story, and they roughly follow the storyline. So in the beginning, Noah was unsure if he should listen to God. He couldn't tread water for very long, so he decided he better start building. Lesson one, the threat of imminent danger requires a contingency plan even if you don't believe the threat. Now, it was a big building project, and Noah had help. I was building my flat pack bed from Ikea the other day, didn't ask for help. Several community members yelled at me, and they said, why didn't you ask for help? And so, it's true. It's easier and much more fun if you do it with someone else. And communities, people often forget to ask for help, and then you're there for, to support each other. Lesson two, Tasks are more fun in pairs. So Noah knew that eventually there would be lots of animals, and he couldn't keep track or calculate how many, and he had to think about food. Communities, they have an event, two people reply, 20 show up. So lesson three, when planning an event, bring extra. There are also two scenarios about proper care. Noah, son, I hear running water. Son, it's just the rain, Dad. Noah, no, no, it's inside. Did you plug the leaks? And Noah's wife thinks Noah took care of the lions, and so did Noah. And Noah's wife says, I fed the ant. No, you didn't feed the antelope to the lions. It's very important that people are clear on their responsibilities. And also, with all the shouting back and forth, that they keep in mind, they have to step back, tune out the other voices, and listen to the one. Now with the ruckus, it can be difficult for Noah to assess the needs. Quieter animals are drowned out. And often in communities, the louder people get the attention. Lesson six, everyone has needs, the loud and big, and the quiet and the small. And also on the ark, not all the animals were cute or cuddly. Many creatures we could live without, flies and snakes, but flies eat manure and Reptiles eat flies and other things. And community, there's a place for everybody, even the annoying people. So lesson seven, everyone has something to contribute. On the ark, not all the animals, hold on. Now after a few weeks, no one and the animals fell into a routine. And life on the ark could be kind of boring. The mice weren't scaring the elephants anymore. And the monkeys were tired of swinging on the rafters. So Noah decided he should probably vary their routine so they don't die of boredom or attack each other. So lesson eight for communities specifically in the quiet months, put good activities so they keep people busy. Also, Noah opened the window at some point. And with communities, they don't always look outside to see what else is going on. They're very self-oriented. So lesson nine, find out what's happening around you. At the end of the story, Noah sends the dove away and she comes out with an olive branch. Lesson 10, if someone goes away with an olive branch, it's time for forgiveness. Welcome them with open arms. So for communities to be thriving, I think we should take a page or two from the Noah story. To be physically, spiritually, and organizationally healthy, they need to do all those things or their boat will sink. Thank you.